working with Mad Mapper in the creation of scenery or set design for a series of plays. And just to show you how simple it is to set up. Well, just to begin with, what I've got is a projector just plugged in, although I'm really just going to concentrate on the onboard viewing of this. I'm just going to go to displays because I've set up my system preferences and I'm just going to click on that. And basically I've turned my mirroring off. There's no checkbox clicked and I've got a 1280 by 800 projector which sits out the side. So I can click on this and move it anywhere I want, but I just want to leave it there on the right hand side generally. What I want to have on this screen is all my dials and set up through Mad Mapper and just the projected image on that side so I can change at will whatever I'm doing and react to the play. So I just want to show you how to set that up. So I'm just going to close that now. Now just to begin with, um, plays can be pretty tricky to uh, put things together. It's about being as simple as possible. It's not just creating the content that's going to work with the play, but you also have to think about this is going to be live and also keying things in so to make it as easy for yourself as possible. Particularly in this case, this is just half of them, just, just the range of plays was a set of about 12 plays altogether that um, went into putting this piece of work together. So what I'm going to just take you through is just a quick setup of things um, to show you how it uh, works and I'm going to take you through that and I'm also going to show you basically how it sort of all came together, the, the steps you need to take into account in putting a play together. Now what's really important is when you discuss with the director just discuss what's really important, just get down to the key things, keep it to a bullet point. Once you get into the creation of the content, you want to keep it as simple as possible again. You might have an animated background scenery that you can um, click to at will to reflect to the music that's being played. I've got new music exactly in this piece. It's actually working with um, music that was created as well as actually just the, uh, the illusion and the, the projection that went, went behind the scenery. So just a quick example of what's going on here. Here's my plays um, and from that this is uh, basically a whole series of folders. I've got Act 1 and Act 2. I've only opened up Act 1 and I'm only going to show you Act 1 just to show you or Act 2 but um, it was pretty well equal plays between the two of them just to show you what's going on. What I've got here is my um, scenery in terms of uh, my background scenery that was put together in Mad Mapper and I've got all the folders that this is pulling the imagery from. I'm just going to go to um, one folder here to show you what's going on. I had a range of 3D files and things that put things together and I've actually created the individual content um, and I've put this together in motion. You might use artifacts. I'm not going to worry about how it was put together, just showing you what you get depending on what um, compositing program he used 3D as well. Um, I use Strata CX in this case. But anyway, I've got um, my titles called Last Breath, Last Breath 1, um, Last Breath 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So this, this was a bigger one. And each of the scenery is actually been saved out as a movie. In this case, I've got um, my uh, first movie, um, a longer version here, and then it sort of goes 2, 3, 4, 5, and um, I've got that together and I'm linking that into my um, application here. So I'm just going to open this up. I'm just going to go into um, the uh, Mad Mapper program so we can see what's going on here. And basically I'm in scene or um, basically the uh, second um, act of this, which has been act two. And I've got everything arranged and I brought it in through the order that it should appear in. See how I've got last breath, which is what I just showed you, one, two, three, four, and five. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that just to show you what's happening here. Basically, out when I'll just start it. So it'll come up with its title. Now I'm doing quite an easy projection. You'll see this in a short while on how this was put together. But essentially, the title comes up first, and I've got a little bit of lead in time so I can put things together. So very simple projection um, that just needed to map to a background. I also had a feed to another projector which was going down to the floor. And I had actually different content that was running through that at the same time. 
and I'll show that in a second. So here's the lead into this file. As I mentioned, the sound was being um, created and it also went in with the, the voice of the actors as they did their piece. So as it goes through, I just simply will let this run. I can actually see it. I can even hold things by moving it slightly. Should I run out of trouble or run into a bit of trouble with timing, just even just hold it like so if I just wanted to stop for a minute. So I actually do that from time to time. But anyway, as it runs through here, I, I wait till it gets right through to about um, 96. And as it goes through 97, 98, and then I just click on to the second stage. Otherwise, it'll go back to the title. So I'll just keep that going. And as you see, I can speed it up. It's great when you're working live. Um, and I'll just run that through here. As it's going to the next one, I'll go on to Act 3. So I've kept my scenery really, really simple. I'll go on to Act 4 as it's starting to really make a difference now. Um, and into Act 5 for the last piece where we basically sort of have a, a death scene. And um, the heart stopping, this was called Last Breath. And um, then it's going to go into basically the light that you see at the end of the tunnel. So very, very simple. And as I say, the trick to doing this is keep it simple and, and just keep all your sets together like so. So here it is, just going into the, the last scene here. And um, it's basically going to finish off there as it's just coming to the end. And um, the last thing they wanted to do is once this play, this was the last play within in the act, um, of being act two, and it was the finish of the, all the plays. So as it's just going to the end here, then I'm just going to bring it up as it's a bit slow there to do, and it'll just come up with Finn being the finish of the plays. And that's when all the lights came on, etc. Now, what I also had was transitions between each of the plays, and I also had um, basically a, um, a preset, um, if you call it, or a part where we're waiting between the interval and also at the start of the play. So I'm just going to click onto that now. And this was a preset that ran for a certain amount of time here. And it was projected onto the background just to run through. I'm just going to speed that up so we can see that all running through like so. So I just knew exactly when it was the time. It actually could run through and it would actually just loop each stage. And I'll have to just let it loop again um, when I was already set to run the plays. But if I just click on the first play like so, then that first play will launch in. And this one was called She'll Be Right. Uh, quite a simple one, this one, which was quite nice. Um, it was actually a, a sort of a, a poem, if you will, and it needed just to be a simple background scene that was projected so the actor could come onto stage. In fact, they were off stage and then they walked on as, as part of their performance. So again, it's very, very simple, but it actually uh, gives a lot more effect than just normal sets sometimes, apart from being a lot cheaper. So what I did for this one is, depending on how the time was, so I'll just drag it forward, I could actually just click back here or move it around. And so it was sort of quite a jumpy scene, so it actually worked great for this one. Anyway, as it's getting to the end, when I had I had a transition piece, and it's right at the top called Globe Launch. So between each set, I'll click on that, and this was the transition, which was rejected really quite large on the background when people could come in and move some of the limited sets there just to set up it was, as it was ready to go on to the next piece. So, for example, now I'll click on Hindsight 1, and it's going on to um, the next play which is just launching into the scene. So that's basically um, all you need to do. It was actually just doing, um, getting the stills, getting the video, getting the scenery. I'll go into stage two now. Um, that would link up. And then I had a, a reverse scene, which goes into the red, a few more um, images in this particular one. And actually it was just a reversal scene, etc. And then it will just go back to part two. Um, then another transition, which would be the globe, and then on to the split, um, which takes you uh, a split second back into the next play. So it's basically as simple as that. So that's how you actually set things up. Now one other thing I've got here, I'm just going to click into, um, oh, oh, by the way, I brought them in in the order they wanted them, and as I click through, you can see that they're all the same um, setting here. 
there was a couple that I wanted to take to a different setting. And this is where I've gone to a preset. Um, and actually, I think they might be all the same in this particular one. But I could actually change the size of this and I would save it as a preset like I did in the, in the first set. So I might just um, just close this one. So I'm just not going to save that one. And I'm just going to open up Act 1 just to show you how that worked. And I'm just going to go into um, my files here as it loads up. Just the files. Let's bring that down so we can see it. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go into my presets here. And you watch what happens with the image here. If you wanted to have a preset because we wanted to use a larger area. So I'm just going to click on to, um, I think that was the small one, uh, but Bushka, I think. You, you notice that the stage is set to a larger stage. So I click back on to a smaller preset. It should jump back in again. So that's where the presets came in handy. Now this could get really complicated, but the point is keep it simple. Now, um, all I've got here is it's really simple. It's basically it's just one surface because it was a simple scene. Um, in the settings, I've just um, got my 1280 by 800, but there's also the projector set up here, which um, makes sure that um, you plug your projector in, and then when you go and um, set that up, then it should actually appear. So if it doesn't appear, quit it once you've got your projector in and relaunch the application, being Mad Mapper, and things should work out okay. So um, that's basically setting things up. Now, just to go back here, I'm not going to say that. I just want to take you back to the initial design, um, which is obviously important to set up. Now, I always draw things um, basically first as a sketch on, and work out how things are going to go. Quite a small um, stage scene. But anyway, this was the the area um, that we're looking at. A, a reasonable sized theatre, but um, quite high. But anyway, the actual scene that we'll be looking at is this is the scene here once we zoom in. So I basically quite often build things in 3D so I can get a bit of a pre and see that how they're going to go. Um, and a sort of example of um, of that is what I might do is I'm just going to um, bring up um, just a, a setting of this file so we can see what's um, happened here. Um, this is a 3D scene. I'm just going to play that. And um, you can see how the set was just put together, etc. So what, what I usually do is I build uh, the scene after drawing it first, work out what I want, then sort of take into a 3D format and simply uh, start projecting onto a still image like the um, second one that I showed you just before in order to get a feel for it. Okay, so it's just like that at the moment. I'm just going to um, close this one. And so I've ended up with that scene. So just taking that scene, what I'm going to do is just take you through here and just show you just a little bit of how that scenery was projected onto. Just a little bit of a video file here. 